Uh, you learn a lot about yourself by how much time you spend on the phone with a complete stranger. And uh, a few weeks ago, I spent four hours on the phone with some guy from the airlines called to tell me I needed a new emergency contact. I was like, oh shit, did something happen to my other emergency contact? <laughs> He's like, no, asshole, you have your own phone number as your emergency contact. <laughs> He's like, you gotta change it. I'm like, no, I think that's cool. I think if there's a really bad accident, I should be the first person you call. <laughs> It's like, Mr. Fox, there's been a terrible accident. No shit, man, I was on that flight. It was awful. <laughs> He's like, you gotta put a different number in there. I'm like, just 911, how about that? Just put 911 in there. <laughs> That's their job. They'll get there before any of my friends. My friends don't even answer their phone. He's like, no, you need a different number. Don't you have someone that cares about you that would feel upset if something happened to you? I was like, dude, I've been talking to you for four hours. You're a complete stranger. <laughs> Clearly, I don't have shit. I'm like, would you feel bad if something happened to me? He's like, yeah, I, I'd feel upset. I'm like, then just put your own goddamn phone on me now. <laughs> just call yourself, explain what happened. My buddy's like, listen, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be your emergency contact. I'm like, dude, you won't take me to the airport when I'm alive. <laughs> How can I expect you to pick me up when I'm oversized baggage? You'll be like, uh, have him text me when he's out front. Uh, your friend's dead and I'll spend all of eternity just on the carousel, just going around, like unclaimed golf clubs, just with my socks sticking out like a three-wood. That's why when I die, I just want them to leave me wherever it happens. Like, the best part about Mount Everest, if you die up there, they just leave you there. There's 400 dead bodies on Everest right now, just stacking up, and people just walk past and like, dead guy, you suck. <laughs> Group of dead guys, you suck as a team. The only way I'm walking past a dead guy is if I don't see him. I'd be like, oh shit, dead guy, Sherpa, yak, dead guy, explain it. Uh, yeah, he wasn't prepared. <laughs> really, he's wearing the exact same outfit I'm wearing. <laughs> and don't go anywhere where it's so dangerous they can't remove the bodies. How about that? If there was four dead comics up here, and they're like, Kirk, go do your special. <laughs> I don't really feel that special. I don't. <laughs> I actually know when I'm gonna die. A few other things. Uh, I went on deathdate.com. It's a website, tells you exactly when you're gonna die. I don't know who's running the site. Graphics are good, I don't know if it's God. But you give them a bunch of information and they tell you the date. I think they're probably the ones killing you. It's like you're gonna die July 20th. How, how do you know? Uh, we're doing it. You just gave us all your information. For $100, we won't kill you. Shit, this is a great website. <laughs> but I typed in all my shit. Turns out I'm gonna die November 40th. <laughs> that's the future, so that's good. <laughs> They're like, for 100, we'll tell you the year. I'm like, that's okay. When it becomes like November 37th and 38th, 39th, I'll know it's right around the corner. I'll just stay off Everest for that particular month. Now I got a telemarketer on my ass. I guess when you go on these websites, it just unleashes the fury. Some guy's calling me every day, telling me I need a plot, trying to sell me a plot. He's like, gotta think about your afterlife. I'm like, dude, I just started thinking about this life. <laughs> like a month ago, when you started calling me every day, saying I needed a plot. <laughs> He's like, what about cremation? Have you thought about cremation? I'm like, you pay for cremation in advance? He's like, yeah. I'm like, how much is it? And he said, how tall are you? <laughs> you charge by the foot for cremation? Put my thumb the other day, sunburn, fever blister. How about a little discount since I've already started the procedure? <laughs> He's like, do you want it? I'm like, no, man, I'm not gonna pay for cremation in advance. What if I die in a terrible fire? <laughs> I look like a real asshole if I've already paid for my cremation. What do you do, cook me twice like refried beans? Forget it. <laughs> and old people, don't tell us where to spread your ashes. You had 90 years to get there. If you didn't make it, it wasn't meant to be. And if it costs more to get there, then you're leaving us in the will? Don't even think about it. <laughs> hey, spread my ashes at the Leaning Tower of Pisa. No, Chuck E. Cheese, how about that? <laughs> pepperoni, well, you like pepperoni. Yeah, all right, that'll work. 
Spread my ashes on top of Everest. No, Vaughn's frozen food section. How about that? <laughs> Evidently, right next to my sperm. How about that? <laughs> I actually know how I'm gonna die. I'm gonna get shot right on the top of the head by a 357 Magnum. <laughs> Let me tell you how I figured this out. Recently, old lady lives in the apartment right above me. She's probably 100, 110. <laughs> Invited me up to her apartment to show me her new 357 Magnum. <laughs> she can't even lift it. It's just hanging there shaking, <laughs> pointed at the floor. Her floor, my ceiling, ladies and gentlemen. And her arms long, and it's just buckling in there with the shag carpet with termites and bed bugs and dust mites from the 20s. It's like a silencer. What the hell? I'm like, why do you have a gun? She's like, there's a hit out on me. There's a hit out on you? You've been on the couch for 50 years. If someone's trying to kill you, they suck. You're not a high priority target. No one's trying to kill you. God can't even kill you. There's like four locks on the gun. She's like, I'll get him. I'm like, he'll have to call you a month in advance just so you can start unlocking the weapon. It took me four hours to open the screen door and I was talking you through it. What are you gonna do when someone's there with a machete just demanding your three bean salad recipe? That's all she makes all day long, three bean salad. And I have a bowl every day because I want the apartment. But it's just a bowl and in the bowl is just three beans. She's like, here's your three bean salad. I'm like, there's just three beans. She's like, yeah, three bean salad. I'm like, that's the title. That's the title. That's the bold shit. You gotta read the little stuff below that. That's what makes it a salad. There's not enough beans in there for a fart. I uh, also read this the other day. Uh, it said anal bleaching, it's not just for the ladies anymore. I don't think it's for anybody, really. It's where they kind of bleach around your asshole and they make it disappear, a little camouflage. The last thing I want to do is disguise my asshole. I don't want someone to accidentally sodomize me and then apologize because they didn't even know that was my asshole. You're my asshole. Yeah, we didn't even see it. Yeah, that's cool. My fault. Back out. I thought it was like tie-dye for a new generation. Wow. Unbelievable. Uh, before I go, just here's what I want to talk about. Uh, I wasn't going to talk about this, but I do not know when I will ever do a special again. So let's just, let's just talk about this. Uh, you learn a lot about yourself when you get a massage from a beautiful man. Uh, and first of all, let me say, I support the troops for sure. My dad was in the army. My mom slept with a lot of soldiers. Uh, recent massage from a Desert Storm veteran, beautiful man. Uh, there was a few red flags. He had on a camouflage Speedo, a little small. I believe a testicle may have been visible. And I know in combat, you really don't want a ball exposed because of shrapnel, so that should have been a, a red flag. Uh, also had some combat boots that were high. And they were shiny, definitely spit shine, and they were pointed. They were pointed and there was a heel, a stiletto, which he said is great for walking across minefields, and that made sense to me. But this guy gave me an amazing massage. And then afterwards, he's like, do you need anything else released in this particular region? <laughs> and I said, no, Colonel, just think of that as the demilitarized zone, all right? I got no knots in my nuts. I don't need any hand-to-hand -to, -hand to mouth combat. And he's like, listen, I could give you a really mean blowjob. And I was like, sir, it, it would have to be the meanest blowjob ever, because I will fight you with everything I have. And I've been in one fight in my life, and I'll risk my title. It was ninth grade, but I will fight to the death. And I know you're trained, so it's probably gonna be ugly. And for what it's worth, ladies, we don't ever want anything mean in this particular ballpark, all right? We respond to kind words, sunlight, 
all right? We're like, a, our dicks are like night-blooming jasmine, all right? <laughs> and he's like, well, listen, I could give you a really nice hand job. I'm like, sir, I gotta be honest with you, I'm not gay. And he's like, well, shit, I, I'm not gay either. And I'm like, well, then this is just good business. This is just <laughs> two guys helping each other out. Now, I'm not gonna tell you what happened because it's classified. <laughs> but if anything did happen, it's not because I'm gay. I'm just very lazy. <laughs> I'm very non-confrontational against uh, a trained U.S. soldier. <laughs> and I also wanna say this. Not every massage, ladies, has to end with a hot towel. Recent massage, I just wanted my neck worked on. I, I was in pain, and I asked my friends, is there any place where I can just get a massage? Just my neck. And none of them knew. <laughs> but I did some research, and I found a place. And should have been some red flags there. It was next to an adult video store where if they didn't have the movie you wanted, they'd make it for you in the back. And I went in there, and the first thing the lady said to me, she's like, are you a cop? And I was like, I wish. <laughs> and she's like, follow me. And let me say this, nothing good ever happens on the other side of beaded curtains. <laughs> but she threw me into this room, and there was just a metal table. And she's like, get naked and get on the table. And immediately, I was thought that someone was trying to freeze my sperm. I, it felt like a setup, because the metal was freezing. But I got up on there, and I'm laying there, and the door opens, and someone comes in. She is that small that when I'm laying on the table, she was below my peripheral vision. And suddenly, I heard her voice. She was right next to me, and she's like, help me up onto your back. And I did. And pulled another muscle. <laughs> and I put her up onto my back, and she started walking. And it felt like a pigeon. She was that small. <laughs> and she took like two or three steps, and she's just like, I'm tired. You're too long. <laughs> and I have a curved spine, so she was also walking uphill. So I, <laughs> I understood. But then I heard, she opened, and she poured oil on my back. And I was like, no, because then she started sliding backwards. <laughs> and she slid into my butt crack, and her toe went right into my asshole. <laughs> and she's like, sorry, I didn't even see it. <laughs> I was like, my fault, you know, that I ain't bleached. It's my mistake. <laughs> Just back out of that. And then she was like, happy ending? No, how, how about just a decent beginning? <laughs> and she's like, rub and tug. I was like, just rub, please. I got tugged earlier today by a U.S. Marine. <laughs> because I support the troops, and I will do whatever I can. Thank you very much, Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara. Take it. Thank you guys. I love you and uh, good night. Good night, Santa Barbara. Thank mm -hmm. you.